on June 11, 2021, Twice released their 10th mini-album titled Taste of Love, worldwide through the label JYP Entertainment and Republic Records. The EP had been preceded by the lead single or title track called Alcohol Free on June 9th. Now, I've been following Twice's music religiously since the release of their Feel Special album, and I've been particularly been waiting for this release since I had absolutely loved their previous album, Eyes Wide Open, and I remember going through Eyes Wide Open and going through the songs and, and just the writing on that album was absolutely amazing. It was just... It was just perfect for my taste of music. Anyway, back to um, Alcohol Free and Taste of Love. Now, the album has been released for a few months and I've listened to all the title tracks multiple times. (laughs) I feel like now I have pretty concrete emotions towards all the tracks in the album. And yeah, let's get into that. The album got a pretty good response from fans, but not only fans. The album faced a pretty good rating of 77 points out of 100 on Metacritic and faced pretty good response by critics as well. Most of them described it as a pretty mix of songs for the summer. I'll be talking about what I find interesting in the music, what sort of theoretically I liked about the songs and lastly what the music made me feel what kind of emotions the tracks evoked from me lastly I'll also very very briefly talk about aesthetics as well as outfits for the only track that has a music video which is obviously the title track alcohol free But for now, let's take a look at the track list. That's what you did to me. first song on this track list is obviously the title track, Alcohol Free. Now when I heard first on their comeback live that the track was a bossa nova style track, I got a little concerned since when I looked at the teasers and the pictures, I could make out that the general concept that they were going for was something like bright, cute, summery and yeah, bossa nova isn't really a style that's done a lot in k-pop or even just pop music in general so i was wondering how they would blend it into like the twice style but it did work out really really well the song maintained proper connections to the bossa nova beats while having dance pop based elements as well as a pretty like mature and round and warm vocal take on top of it and yeah the vocals the production it was mixed really well and i know the song wasn't this usual instant earworm that usually twice puts out because i know a lot of twice's music is super super catchy but this is sort of like a song that grows on you really really slowly actually not even that slowly it basically grows on you pretty fast. Although it grew on me and a lot of other listeners as well, but I would still call it a catchy song since to my ear it has all the elements of a catchy song. 
um talking about the song a bit more it has some really cool chord changes while staying true to the bossa nova style like as we get to the bridge like the instrumentation becomes very very warm and really really beautiful and in general the soundscape thickens a bit and in general the vocal take as you move forward along with the song moving on to the bridge it turns a little little more concrete if i could def- say it sort of concrete sharper whatever you'd like to call it <laughs> moving on from the bridge to the chorus like the beats build up and everything slowly slowly expands and you know it breaks into this warm sounding really 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 cute chorus and everything just sounds so well blended together like the vocals the chord that's what you did to me vocal is still quite full and strong and also almost piercing in a way but the chords kind of calm down take a back seat and sort of like the beats come into action to give the dance chorus where they you know do their little choreography i particularly love the chorus of the song and how it adds this really cool bass which is complemented by the snare that fits so snugly like the relationship between the bass and the snare sounds really really good and yeah it's added in the chorus but it remains for the rest of the song you know continuing to keep the song upbeat it's one of the main reasons why the song sounds so upbeat Another one of my favorite parts of the song is right after the first chorus um during Dahyan's part they add these few chords on the piano which just sound so nice they sound so bouncy <laughs> They sound so bouncy, so light, and those chords still sound very much Latin inspired. So yeah, in general, when I heard that, I was like, "Oh, that sounds cute." <laughs> Moving forward, the lyrics. Um, the lyrics they are pretty standard JYP, like they're written to sound sonically good. and it does sound good and based on the song it's written very much as like a light description of feelings and emotion that you go through during a certain experience and in this song those emotions would be a absolutely days romantic spending time with someone they have feelings for and yeah it just the lyrics are super fun and the lyrics sound super poppy too And yeah, I just really like it. <laughs> In fact, the only part about the song that bothers me is um the intro. I absolutely cannot listen to the intro of the song with my headphones on because for some reason I really hate that JYP sound. <laughs> like like i don't know i didn't like the idea of putting jyp's name at the beginning of the song anyway but i absolutely cannot listen to it with like the added asmr effect it puts me off 
a lot in this short segment i want to just say a little bit about their outfits because oh my god i really really like their outfits and their looks it looks so comfortable it looks so good like i remember watching their comeback live and i looked at the set and the costumes and as soon as i looked i was like yes this is my type of aesthetic like the bright mixed with the beach outfits with the pastels it's just so my style and i think at least the the outfits that they wore in the music video are one of my top like favorite outfits ever worn by twice yeah <laughs> so let me tell ya i don't know about you but i track called first time the track was written by jiho and was composed by rick parkhouse and george dessa together known as the red triangle along with jade thorwall from little mix and sophie francis cook now i do not know whether i'm pronouncing their names correctly or if my accent is ruining it but bear with me <laughs> um now the song is comparatively slow paced and has somewhat a simpler arrangement compared to the tiger track but it works out for the kind of soundscape that it creates and it works out with the vocals the point of the song or the main focus of it is not the production it's the members voices it wants you to focus on the members voices and that's why the production is kept so simplistic the song has a slight throbbing or like beating sort of feeling which is created by the timing of the chords and the rhythmic bass which is added later on i feel like the entire build up until the chorus is filled with these almost unpredictable sort of sly sound both in the vocals and in the arrangement you have sounds like the ticking of a clock these popping sounds ni sanka re no ni kangimyeon ga to taeran daro so let me tell ya tora hoyo so sweet could i like a first time these popping sounds this short duration of these synth build ups that appear like twice i believe so let me tell ya i don't know about you but i get butterflies these small details help the production a lot and add to the production by a lot because the track by itself can be pretty simple and almost boring but the final cherry on top is the members voices the entire production is built in a way that it wants you to focus on the members voices and for good reason the vocals on this song sound so so amazing depending on what part of the song you choose and which member is singing the singing styles can vary a lot at parts of the song the vocals are almost pretty pretty deep on the lower end of their voices sometimes they're soft and breathless and sometimes they're full sounding and in certain parts of the song they go really really high into their falsetto and just 
again add to that almost desperate sounding vocal adding on to like this sultry feature of the song in this track it's the vocals that paint the picture of the music like this song paints such a sensual image like hearing the song i can imagine this deep red sultry yet sweltering image in my head it's really that good i know my way of describing this may not be understandable for some people and i'm sorry but it's just when i hear songs and i feel something from it i usually end up painting this picture in my head to correlate with the song i don't know it makes sense to me <laughs> when talking about the lyrics of the song they're good i would even go as far as to say they're excellent the entire first verse is just a description of a particular metaphor that jiho creates with the help of personifying herself as a flower petal an entire verse just to describe that one experience the first half of the pre-chorus lures you in and invites you in and by the time we get to the second part there's a abrupt change in the arrangement of the music and as you're surprised you realize even in the lyrics there's a physical change in the demeanor of the speaker and eventually when the chorus breaks out it breaks out into these soft yet extremely tense lines and this all still holds up even with all the heavy and tense build up and throughout the song you have these very sensory descriptions and they make the song all the more suggest that i don't know about you but I- they're very very in deep descriptions of a lot of what they're physically feeling and it's just adding to the general seductiveness of the song i would say i don't know the song in some ways makes you feel very exposed you're scared of what will happen but you're also excited yeah that's how i describe the song The song makes you scared of what will happen. track on this album is a track titled Scandal. The track is written by Daehyun herself and the song has been arranged by producers such as Eric Smallland and Christopher Dommervik and the production was also done by the duo with the help of Alida Garpestad Peck. I'm sorry. I do not know how to pronounce your name. So I'm just going to call you Alida. Now the production of the song was simple it had a few instruments and it was very retro inspired i really like the booming bass at the bottom of the song as well as the heavy piano chords that came around the second half of the chorus this song i noticed had comparatively a lot of more english lyrics and sometimes hearing that especially when i was listening to the album for the first few times it surprised me but it seemed to flow together pretty well and yeah it blended pretty seamlessly 
Hearing the lyrics in the song and reading up the translations, the lyrics made sense, song storyline, and yeah, it blended well into that aspect. The addition of the extra English lines or I don't know anything else in the song, it didn't take away from it from what I've noticed. The lyrics of this song were also pretty seductive, but I wouldn't call it as seductive as first time because that was like peak sexy music, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, the contents of the song were also pretty sexy. The lyrics weren't extraordinary, but they weren't terrible either it held up well with the song and yeah the song in general it was a decent retro pop b-side and i do think it's a really good addition to the album as a whole love is all about timing now don't do it all but shit don't come too late Let's have a little less conversation Na 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 hey Nigga did a whole nin go soon gun na 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 hey Could you mara de yana so no no bitch in a bola Just a little less conversation Na 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 hey The fourth track on the album is called Conversation. It was written by Sana and was composed by Chris Mears and Robbie McDade, together known as Bloodline. And they did that with the help of Rebby James. And lastly, the song was also arranged by Bloodline. Talking a bit about the song, the thing that I love most about the song was the melody line and the vocals. Now, like first time, the song has a lot of high and low and medium. <laughs> Basically, there's a lot of change in vocal styles. And because there are nine members, there are even more styles than there would have been if there was only one member. I do not know why am I saying this. In general, there's a huge diversity in the vocal style as well as the melody line. In some parts of the song, the melody line is just so attractive, so catchy, just so, so, so clean and good. I love how the vocals move from this really soft place at the beginning of the song and by the time we get to the chorus they sound sharp almost pointy except for their vocals let's talk a little bit about the vocal production the vocal production on this track is marvelous the layering the doubling it all sounds incredible and the timing of these effects are also correct, like doubling perfectly at the perfect time and adding reverb at the perfect time. I particularly like the doubling that they've done during the chorus and the reverb that they've added in the end, especially with the kind of track and the kind of melodies Adding this sort of reverb could have made the song sound a little dated, but it still sounds pretty good. It sounds like today's music. It sounds like modern music. And in general, I know I've said this for almost every track until now, but it fits. It fits really well. There are re some really cool parts about the production as well, like... There's, you have the bass guitar, you have the snaps, you have the synthetic guitar sounds, and yeah. 
The only possible critique that I would have of the song is the build up before the final chorus seemed a little bit unnecessary because it didn't expand or move forward or even have any additional elements for the final chorus so it kind of felt like we were building up to go somewhere to have some additional things but we kind of came out empty handed I don't know it makes it sound so bad but it's really not that big of a deal um talking a little bit about the lyrics the lyrics are written by Sana and I don't know they sound just so romantic to me and you know they give me this you know clouds and sparkles and I don't know, almost like a Disney vibe. I don't know, it almost, I wouldn't say off Disney. But just, if you just look at the lyrics, aside from the vo- their vocal takes and all, it does sound Disney. <laughs> like, I know this song does have some suggestive parts in it, but it's really not as much compared to like, first time or scandal it just sounds too sweet for that i don't know is it because i'm imagining sana writing this i don't know it just sounds super super cute next track on the album is called Baby Blue Love. It has been written by Nyon and has been composed by Norman Harambasic, Ronnie Vidar Svensson and Anne Judith Wick. I'm sorry if I'm butchering all the names. And these three producers are all part of design music or zin music. Again, I do not know how to pronounce that. I'm just going to call it design music. Uh, and these three, along with the help of Karen Poole, have composed the song. The arrangement is also done by Ronnie Svensson from design music. Now. This particular track has a simpler framework in the production, but it still has this very rich and warm sound. I wouldn't say warm, definitely a rich sound. Now, this is done by the presence of this cool bass and these very warm sounding synths, and they're complemented with these strong keys, and they sound very much like they have been played so super super strongly during the recording and I don't think that's what happened. Um, Also something that lifts up this track is the guitar parts. The guitar parts sound so real. (laughs) If those guitar parts are recordings, it's okay for them to be recordings because those parts sound so real I cannot make out any difference so yeah it's fine if they're not real acoustic recordings and yeah just the chords and the general sound of the song is magnificent now talking about the lyrics again the song has a lot of english lyrics in the song i think members like nayan and dahyan are trying to write with mixing more English into their lyrics to sort of diversify their styles. And I know for a fact that Nyan is taking English lessons. So it only makes sense. Um, Now for this song, to learn the meaning of the Korean parts, I had to go and look it up on color-coded lyrics.com because apparently Genius had some problems with translating the Korean. I don't know what happened. Talking about the lyrics. <laughs> they sound like super nyan lyrics. And the lyrics paint this picture of this super summer day which is bright and the sky is clear. 
and the lyrics simply melt in with the rest of the song like it makes sense to the production although the production is very retro it has this very very what do you call bright feature about it i don't know it just feels like this is a song meant to be played in the daytime or this is a this kind of song represents the daytime <laughs> i do not know what i'm talking about at some point also i love the melody at the chorus of the song because it just complements the instrumentals perfectly and in general it's super catchy like i remember when i think the audio snippets came out for all the b-sides of the album and as soon as i heard a part of like the chorus which played i remember thinking oh that's nice but i was humming that one part like baby blue like for the rest of the day and i was like wow this is really catchy and yeah i do enjoy that and it has not aged badly for me cuz sometimes when a line or a melody line is too catchy it can get pretty unlikable when you hear it after a certain point of time but thankfully this song does not go down that line finally something i really enjoy is the adlibs and now when i'm listening to a song whenever people do adlibs or like a certain part comes where they perform adlibs i don't know why i always sing along even though i know <laughs> i sound terrible <laughs> but i always sing along so adlibs for me for my listening experience plays a huge part on determining how much i like the song and yes i do really like the adlibs on the song i love to sing to it and yeah they're just stellar i also know they have a call and response part at like the second half of the track that thing i always would hum during my day when i'm doing homework just any time of the day just in general i enjoyed the adlibs and the oohs and ahs and na na na's and i th- believe this is the song out of the album which i listened to the most i'm not sure the song paints such a beautiful picture of this like bright sunny day with blue skies and small clouds and this excitement bubbles inside your stomach as you progress along with the song and that is why i call it retro pop perfection i know it sounds like i'm exaggerating it but for this particular track i'm really not <laughs> i just i really like it to that extent SOS it's the last track on the album and it was written by Daehyun composition was done by Chloe Latimer Lee Hyun Do and Glo the song was arranged by Lee Hyun Do as well the song has this progressive production which allows the vocals and the melody to take place as the center of attention of the song and i think that worked out pretty well i also really like some of the melody lines at certain parts of the song It has this really soft feeling like the end of a chapter for this next segment again 
I took the lyrics from Kalakota.com because I'm pretty sure the people at Genius gave up at translating lyrics after a certain point. Um, so yes. Now the lyrics in this song are not exactly written supportive of the emotions that the soundscape created for me. Uh, the lyrics contain particularly a darker shade at love and relationships compared to the rest of the tracks in the album. And the lyrics talk about how madly in love the speaker is in with their significant other. But at the same time, it also describes how worried the speaker is about their state of relationship and what their relationship may face in the future. It serves as a harsh reality that most people who want to go through relationships have to face. The lyrics express how toxic the relationship has turned into and managing the relationship has definitely taken a toll on her mental health. In the end, the speaker remains in a constant state of worry of her future. So, when I first heard SOS, I wasn't a big fan of it since the arrangement didn't make me feel like this song was going to be my cup of tea. Slowly but definitely, the song has grown on me by a lot. And yes, it is on my playlist. It is definitely one of those songs I listen to when I'm feeling low. The calm production and the emotionally toned lyrics definitely make it one of those songs that you listen to when you're just tired. It makes you feel cozy and comfortable. And that's all I'll be talking about today. I know technically I've left out the English version for Cry For Me as it was the last track on the album. But to be honest, I consider the English version of Cry For Me part of the Korean version, which is technically a digital single. And to be honest, to talk about Cry For Me, I'd rather make an entire different video about it because there are so many things I want to talk about, both in the Korean and the English lyrics. So that's why I left it out. All the lyrics in the video were taken from the Genius website except for SOS and Baby Blue Love, which were taken from colorcodedlyrics.com. The English translations of the songs were not available in Genius.com. Many of the points in the video mix the description of a song as well as my personal opinions on it. And a lot of the points that I've made in this video are my personal opinions. So feel free to disagree with my opinions. Comment down below. I don't know. And lastly, please be respectful while discussing your opinions with others in the comment section and remember not everybody's gonna have the same opinion or feelings as you and thank you if you've made it till this part of the video if anybody did i really appreciate it don't forget to subscribe and comment down which is your favorite track from the album and that's all bye bye